Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so welcome to Cryptocurrency Explained. I think we're on about episode 11 now. Uh, hopefully it's all working okay. Um, seeing some people already in the live chat. So uh, if somebody um, can just let me know this is all uh, streaming live. I'm always a little bit nervous when I start off that uh, I never know whether it's quite working or not. Um, see some regulars here. Stuart, uh, XRP, good to see you again. And some new people here, I think. Crypto Green Man and Friends. And uh, I, I, hikey, I, I hikey around. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, but uh, Crypto Green Man says all good. So that's good. Great. Good, good, good. Um, fantastic. Uh, and so, yes. Uh, I'm never quite sure, like I said, sometimes YouTube comes back and tells me that it's not actually streaming well enough. So, But hopefully all's going well. And uh, hi, Jamal. Um, great. So we're going to be talking about trading bots, uh, specifically about cryptocurrency trading bots, but a little bit about uh, algorithmic trading in general. And uh, just as probably an even bigger disclaimer than... I probably give on the previous shows, even though I probably forget to do them. Um, this is not trading advice. This is not financial advice. Do not follow anything I say. You will lose money, etc., etc. But I should probably say that um, sort of even even louder um, today, um, because we're going to be talking about algorithmic trading, and there's a possibility here to uh, lose money quite quickly um, if you're not careful. Okay, someone's saying here that the sound the picture's not that good, actually. One second here, let me just switch. Hopefully this won't disconnect us. Um, if I just switch that off there, are we still here? Um, that might have improved things, potentially. Um, is it still here? Hopefully. Yes, I think I'm still going. Um, hopefully, no, it's still flickering to red. Oh, well. Hopefully the audio will be, be good enough. Um, I'm never quite sure what it is that makes this work or not. Um, just general bandwidth in the area, I think. Anyway, um, so as I was saying, uh, going to be talking about trading bots. Uh, going to be talking about, in general, about algorithmic trading, about what trading bots are, the general strategies. I'm not going to go into very great detail on sort of how to create your own, so to speak. Um, I'm not going to tell you all how to become millionaires through this. Um, there is money to be made. There is also money to be lost. There is risk. There is reward like all of this. Uh, I'm coming at this from a background of I am a software developer. So I have experience in software. I do not have experience necessarily in finance. What I've learned from this is all stuff that I've learned as I've been doing this, and it's been quite interesting looking at uh, various papers that people have written and various strategies and go back, you know, people have been trading stocks and shares for God knows how long. And as soon as computers were invented, um, algorithmic trading started to come around. People started to use computers to try and get an edge in trading. And so, you know, some of these strategies are looking back at things that people have used in stocks and shares trading foreign currency trading uh, for years. So some of this is, is nothing new specifically to cryptocurrency. What is interesting with this is that traditionally you needed to have some way of submitting orders. If you're going to write some software to, to trade automatically on your behalf, you need to have some mechanism to submit those trades. So you need to have some kind of connection to a trading desk or to an exchange now, typically, those were out of the reach of general population. You had to work for a bank or, or whatever. You had to have the connections, the money, the infrastructure to do that sort of thing. What cryptocurrency has brought about is the ability for anybody, you or I, to connect to exchanges and trade. And most of these trade is, trading desks or exchanges have what's called an API, an application programmer interface. That's the, the bit that allows code to interface with an exchange rather than you or I clicking with a mouse and, and filling in numbers. And that's what's enabled people to write software to trade. 
Now, there's many different approaches to this. I'm going to kind of touch on a few different kind of strategies, talk a little bit about trading bots, what they are, um, and, and what they might do. So, and if anybody has any questions, then as usual, just submit them in the live chat. There's a little bit of delay between the live chat and, and what I see, so I might get around to them a little bit later, but please go ahead and ask them because most of these shows end up um, being, you know, the, the content is generated by yourselves from the live chat and the questions and answers that we have going on here. So I'm always very appreciative of, of, of people on the show and, and, and chatting, so that's great. So let's just start off with some basics. What do we what what do I mean when I talk about a trading bot? What's a bot? Bot short is bot is short for robot, right? The the idea being is it's some kind of automated mechanism that can make trades on your behalf. Now, most people are familiar with exchanges, you know, if we go to an exchange and go to look at something like um, I don't know, something like Coinbase, for example, or CEX, or Bitstamp, or Kraken, or whatever you want to use, um, most people will be familiar, and and I've talked about exchanges previously, uh, a quick little recap here. In most exchanges you have what's called an order book, and you have uh, bids and asks uh, on, on the order, so this is this is the market, this is what people are willing to sell at, and buy at so there's somebody here that is willing to sell so we're looking here at Bitcoin GBP so the price of Bitcoin versus uh, pound sterling on Coinbase so there's somebody willing to sell 0.9 Bitcoin at 4,955 pounds and 8 pence there's somebody willing to buy 0.41 Bitcoin at 4,955 and 07 pence so these are the these are the the offers and the bids that people are willing to to pay and and in the middle is kind of where they where they meet where an exchange happens down the side here we've got the trade the trade history so looking here uh within the last minute there was a uh somebody a, a trade happened at 4955 08 you can see there's several trades happening at, a, at, a, at that price and you can see new new trades coming in and, and and we'll come back to this, but just to keep an eye on this in case it it actually happens whilst we're whilst we're running here, um, I've actually got a bot running on this exchange on Coinbase at the moment. Um, I'll talk about why I'm running it on Coinbase and, and and why I'm running it on this particular currency pair in in a little bit. But um, it's just in testing. It has the equivalent of about 150 pounds uh, of, uh, of 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 Bitcoin here, and uh, it's currently looking to sell Bitcoin at the moment. And, and you can see this is its order here, so it's looking to sell it. It might be that during the course of this talk, it manages to sell that, and we'll look and see what happens. Although looking at the market at the moment, uh, for the past couple of hours, the market for Bitcoin has been pretty much flat, and very little has happened happened on here. So, yeah, but these are the, the constituent parts of an exchange. We have an order book. Uh, we have these are my orders here. This my my open orders. I've got one open sell order in. And this is the trade history that's that's gone on. And what we want to do, or the, the idea behind this, is to write some sort of software to trade on my behalf. So rather than me sitting here and, and filling in numbers and, and saying whether I want to buy or sell, I want some piece of software that can do it on my behalf. Now, why would I want to do that? Uh, why, why, why do this? Well, ultimately, you know, being you know, honest about this, ultimately to make money. Um, but there's various different ways to do that and various different reasons to do that. One of the things about trading is it can get very emotional. It can get, you can get very tied in. You can sit there and you can look at um, charts and you can analyze things to your heart's content. You think, right, it's definitely going to go up now. And you, you know, you put a trade in and then you sit there watching it and you're up all night, three o'clock in the morning. You look, oh, I wonder if it went through or not. Or, you know, there's an, an anxiety that can form around it. There's some very, very negative um, kind of almost addictions, I suppose, a bit like people are getting gambling habits with, with cryptocurrency and with trading. Um, there's a lot of emotion involved. And there's a lot of times you think, well, this this one last one's going to go go well. Or you have a, a positive bias in that. Your last trade went very well, so surely this you, you've got it right and the next one's going to go right. 
one of the reasons why I personally uh, write trading bots is because it can take that emotion out of it. I can write something that will just look at cold, hard numbers and it will trade based upon those numbers. The computer's got no emotion, right? It can look at the numbers and decide whether something's good or good or bad. Now, whether or not it gets it right is a totally different matter. Whether or not the computer is able to um, ascertain whether or not it's a profitable trade as well as a human can is a, is, is a different topic. But the main point here being is that it will do it without emotion. And I can leave it going. And if I can trust the, the trading bot, then I can go to sleep and I can sleep fine knowing that it's going to take care of it. Now, there could be another kind of anxiety in that I'm sitting there wondering, is my trading bot working? Um, have I got a bug in my code and it's going to lose lose everything? You know, what, what happens in this case or that case? So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying this is the perfect answer and it does maybe just move some of the anxiety from one type to another. But this is the way, this is why I look at it. Also, for me personally, like I said, I'm a software developer. It's a bit of a challenge. I actually got into this completely randomly. Somebody, a, a former colleague of mine, gave me some XRP as a, as a present and said, here, you know, it's, it's not worth much, but it you know, might be worth something in the future. That was about 18 months ago. And uh, I uh, was I'd finished the contract I'd been working on. I was looking for some new work and as a way of kind of staying kind of in skills, I decided to, to learn a new skill. And that was a programming language, uh, a programming system called Node.js, written in JavaScript. And it just so happened that um, I'd been given this XRP. Uh, Ripple had a API to allow you to interface with the ledger. And so I thought, well, you know, as a as a, you know, a bit of a game, um, can I write something to trade? Can I write something to, to, to do something with this XRP? And it was an intellectual curiosity. It was a bit of a game. It was a bit of fun. Um, it was a learning exercise for myself. And that was a bit of a rabbit hole that I went down and 18 months later has led to all manner of different things. So, uh, but I've looked at all different sort of strategies. I've researched um, uh, the way a bit more about finance. I've actually done a fintech course with Oxford University who interestingly now have an algorithmic trading course that I'm very, very tempted to, to look at as well. Um, I've, I've looked at lots of research papers. I've looked at things like artificial intelligence. I've looked at various sort of charting methods and, and mechanisms people use to try and learn a lot more. So for me personally, it's been a been a learning exercise. Now, that's not to say you have to be a software developer to do this. There are a lot of third party services. So somebody here uh, has Mac has medic XRP has mentioned uh, a service called three commas. Um, I've not had a look at three commas. Um, I think I've heard of it, but there's there's some other. So uh, there's one, for instance, here, Crypto Trader. I'm not endorsing any of these. I've, I've, I've not used any of these in particular. But, you know, there's ones here that allow you to basically um, create your strategy without necessarily needing um, to know how to develop software or run servers or anything. You can you can write um you, you just concentrate on the strategy or in some cases you can pick strategies that other people have used or even rent strategies as a marketplace in this one where strategies can be bought and sold. You can do what's called backtesting, which is where you run the strategy over historic data. Whilst you know historic data doesn't necessarily predict the future and the future can always change, it gives you an idea as to whether or not something might work, whether a strategy might work or might make money. You know, if you if you ran it um, over the, the space of a year and it, it made money, whatever, every week, then maybe it might keep making money every week. Uh, Hass, this is a company that makes a, a trading bot that's sort of fairly famous when the original Bitcoin trading bots. Um, and, you know, they've they've got lots of stuff in here. It supports various different altcoins, different exchanges. Um, so yeah, you know, there's there's different ones. Most of these ones then have a sort of a plan and a pricing. And so this one's particularly priced in, in Bitcoin. So 0 0.2 Bitcoin per 12 months. That's what's that's about $150, maybe that sort of order of magnitude, $150 for a year. Um, so not 
that expensive maybe, but obviously it means your strategy has to make at least $150 for you to be... Um, actually, no, it's not 150 I think it's uh, 1500 I think. I think a decimal place off. I think it's about $1,500. Uh, so your strategy has to make at least that um, to, uh, to, to break even. So there's... There's services out there. Most of the services themselves are in the market to make money. And so one of the things you've got to be aware of is your strategy has to be good enough to not just make money, but make money above and beyond whatever fees you'll be paying. And not only are there fees possibly for, for the, the bot software, but there'll be fees for exchanges as well. So every exchange will charge you a fee so if we look at some of the exchanges here if we look at say cex for example and look down here at the fee schedule um they've got fees here for what's called a, a, a the market taker and a market maker and they have slightly different fees for each so a market taker is when you go you place an order that immediately fills on a market uh, you are going in and you're buying something and you are saying right i want to buy at whatever price is 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 available a market maker, you are making an offer to buy or sell, but it's not necessarily being filled straight away. You are providing liquidity to, to the market. And so you'll find a lot of exchanges will actually charge less for market makers and market takers because they want to increase liquidity on the exchange. They want a healthy ecosystem. They want people placing orders. And so on a lot of exchanges, you, you will have um, you know bots trading on there and here as well as the volume goes up you get you know less and less price if if you were trading 6000 bitcoin a month your price would be zero for being a market maker so you know there's a, a potential chance there to make a, a, a fair bit of money on that now these fees may seem very small you know fractions of a percent but depending upon your strategy that can be the bit that makes it or breaks it a lot of the times you'll read some of the papers that people have written and the software and you'll, you'll, you'll read it and they'll say, well, the strategy sort of worked in, in theory and then in reality it didn't once we added fees in. And that's because if you're making lots and lots of very small trades, then it could be that that tiny percentage is the difference between making a profit and making a loss. And when you accumulate that over time, you accumulate a profit or you accumulate a loss. So... Uh, yes, yeah, so that's CEX, um, and here let's have a look. If we if we actually look at the exchange, if I go back to the exchange on on CEX, um, looking here, there, there's a bot that runs on here that's actually fairly easy to spot because it always uh, trades seven thousand XRP. So this is XRP to US dollar, and you'll see it pop up here. It's always there. We go seven thousand. It was just there seven thousand, um, seven thousand selling. And there's there's one there, 7,000 buying. Now, there's possibly a couple of orders in there masking that. There's probably one order for 7,000 and one order for um, 662. But you'll keep seeing it pop up on either side, trading 7,000 XRP each way. And that's, that's, there's a very, very high chance that's a bot that's trading there. Um, if we look back on, on uh, Coinbase, let's see if we can find a slightly more active market if we look at bitcoin euro is that doing something at the moment hmm. not much bitcoin's been very quiet uh recently last few days um see if we can find one that's got something exciting happening um okay bitcoin cash us dollars right if we watch this you'll see the um so one of the nice uh, one of the nice things i suppose for 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 um bots on coinbase is they charge 0% for market makers. So that means there's a big incentive to run bots on there. And as a result of that, the spread, which is the price between the best ask and the, and the best bid, is very low. Uh, and often can be down as, as low as sort of one, um, uh, one point on here. So 0 0.01, uh, one tick, as it's called. Uh, but you'll see there's lots of movement on here, lots of orders being placed. And there's lots of algorithmic activity going on here, lots of bots um, bidding. Now, they'll be bidding against each other as well. So you'll have software competing against other software. For me, that's fascinating. I, I, I love that. I find that a, a really interesting challenge, writing software to compete with other software. 
but you'll see them suddenly go into this mad dance sometimes. Um, yeah, you see going on, on up here, you see this mad dance going on as, as they're all kind of vying for each other to uh, get what they consider to be the price that's going to be profitable. And they'll all have slightly different strategies and often the strategies will be kept quite close to their chest. So I'll talk in general terms, but I won't talk in specific terms about the strategies my bots use, because if somebody else knew what strategy mine was using, then they could use that against me. If they knew that my bot always placed a bid at a certain price, then they'd be able to come in and, and, and undercut that, for example. Um, so there's, there's, there's various things you have to have to do to ensure that, um, you know, your, 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 your bot's going to be able to survive being in an environment where there's other algorithmic trading going on as well, because sometimes they can end up kind of playing a game of chicken with each other and each trying to outbid each other until they get to a point where, you know, they've, 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 they've both outbid each other, but they've actually then lost any profit that there was. Let's go back to, uh, back to R1 and just see, no, there's still very little going on, 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 on here. There's kind of a stalemate going on at the moment um, with, with the price being absolutely flat here. Uh, anyway, um, let's look at some of the comments here. Um, Henrik Thornquist, good to see you Henrik again. Uh, must say back in April, Crypto Hopper was making me a real good daily return on that mini bull run. Right, And it, okay, so that's that's a point. I don't know Crypto Hopper specifically, but again, some bots will work better in certain market environments. So there's a bot that I run, I'll show you in a bit, that, that I've been running for um, about 18 months now on the XRP ledger. And that actually makes more profit when XRP is either going horizontal or the price is going down slightly. If we have a big sun jump up, it, it, it loses money. So we had the, uh, when was it, about three weeks ago when XRP suddenly jumped up? Uh, it lost, um, well, it lost about sort of four or 5,000 XRP um, over the space of two or three days, um, which is unfortunate. Um, though it's made most of that back again now and it's you know it, it is fairly profitable in, in in what it does so overall that was a that was a, a loss but in the grand scheme of things it's still been profitable but if the price was continually going up and going up and going up then that bot might not be profitable so uh green crypto man or crypto green man asks what if everyone used bots would it make it almost pointless well Depending on various statistics and, and, and things you look at, a lot of people say that actually you know, 90, 95% of the market is algorithmic trading anyway. So maybe it's, maybe it's already there. Would it be pointless? Well, yes or no, and it depends upon what the bots are trying to do. So we'll talk about sort of strategies in a bit, but a lot of the bots that I write, for example, make a very, very tiny profit. So. They will they will buy something and then look to sell it for, you know, half a percent, a tenth of a percent profit. Now that might not seem like much, but if it can do it repeatedly, then that's then that's great. The fact that I'm willing to buy and sell something and and try and make a tenth of a percent profit on it, well, if you've come in and you bought something, you know, a few months ago and you're now looking to sell it and you're making a 20% profit or 100% profit or 1000% profit, whatever it might be, then the fact that I'm making a, a tenth of a percent means nothing to you. You, you. you don't care whether I make a tenth of a percent off of you because you're making a thousand percent. So in that regards, is, is, is it pointless? Well, no, you can, you'll still, you will have a different sort of time frame by which you're trading. And not only that, so one of the, the, the bots that I've run for a long time is what's called a market maker bot. And what it does is it never buys, like it, it's never a market um, taker. It's always a market maker. So it's, it never actually actively uh, buys anything. What it does is it just offers to sell the whole time. And it offers to sell from both directions uh, with a currency. And so the fact that it's there means that if you come along to buy, there is somebody willing to sell. Because if you think on every trade, there has to be a buyer and a seller. So if you want to come and, you know, say, you know, XRP suddenly shoots up and you want to sell it, well, unless anybody's willing to buy it, you're not going to be able to sell it. So you need somebody on both sides of the trade. 
And that's what market makers do. And actually in professional sort of trading markets and exchanges, um, market makers are often, you know, paid to be there to, to, to run, to keep the liquidity up. Now, like I said, I make a tiny little bit of profit on the spread. So if we look at, um, if we look at one of these, so looking on Coinbase, the, the spread is virtually nothing at the moment. Like I said, 0 0.01. If we look at a different market on Coinbase, so where was it that was busy? Um, was it Bitcoin US dollar we looked at? Um, no, that one's also pretty small as well. Let's try and find one. Like I said, it's all been fairly quiet. Okay, Ethereum, uh, no, Bitcoin Cash, uh, pound sterling. There's a 25, 30 pence difference. Okay, it's going up, it's going down, it's going all over the place. Three pounds, right? So the difference between what somebody's willing to pay and what somebody's willing to buy at the moment is around about three pounds, two pounds 70, two pounds 60. See, it goes up and down the whole time because of this, this activity that's going on. But what it means is I can potentially sell something and then turn around and buy it back again two pounds cheaper. Or I can, I can um, uh, buy something and then turn around and sell it for two pounds more. And maybe that might make me that slight profit. So I'm profiting off that spread there. What that does is that encourages that spread to be smaller. And by making that spread smaller or tighter as a say in the sort of financial lingo that the tighter spread means that the cost between buying and selling is less which is advantageous for you say as a, as a as a human trader coming along and wanting to buy or sell because you don't have to pay that price that spread price when you go to buy or sell right you're getting the the, the optimum price if that is down so that's down to 0 0.01 right at the moment that that is the best you're going to get Right, that means that the sell and the buy price are as close as possible uh, to each other. So that's the optimum, the optimum price. So let's see, what do we? Some more comments here. Um, Apex is a great scalping bot. I've tried it out. Makes trades in one to three seconds. Sometimes buy and sell. Yeah. So some of these are, are are trading very quickly. They're trading in the sort of you know seconds time frame. What is what is generally sort of termed as high frequency trading. In, at least in cryptocurrency terms, in, in terms of sort of general financial markets, high frequency trading is talking nanoseconds. And this is an interesting thing with with traditional financial markets, there's an advantage to be as close as possible to the exchange. I mean, literally, physically close, because the information, the, 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 the request to make a, a trade can only go as fast as the speed of light. And, you know, we think the speed of light is fast. Well, yes, it is. But if you're trying to make a uh, uh, an exchange, if you're trying to place an order and you're competing with others and you are talking about literally nanoseconds between, you know, there's information coming in and you placing an order. If you have to be the first one to be there, then you have to physically be close to the exchange so that the speed of the distance that the signal has to travel is as short as possible. I mean, that's the distance we're talking about. So... You know, transatlantic cables going across. There's there's a company that's running a transatlantic cable going up via Iceland because they reckon it's going to save, I think it's about 60 nanoseconds off of the time for data to travel between London and New York, which means if you're trying to trade between those two, that's actually a, a, a you know, a big advantage. With cryptocurrency, especially if you're talking decentralized exchanges, that's not so much an issue because there's no center. So the XRP ledger has an exchange built in and there's no center to it because it's decentralized. So here in the UK, connected to the XRP ledger, I am just as close to it as the biggest financial house in the world sat in the middle of London or New York or Tokyo um, because there's no center, which actually puts us on a level playing field, which means I can compete against Goldman Sachs or, or whoever on, on trading and that's that's pretty cool that's 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 you know i quite i quite like that um so hasmedic asks i would have thought that if you're trading manually you can maximize your profits rather than putting in predetermined parameters so yes if you're trading manually you can possibly make more profit because you can look at it and go okay i won't quite sell now because it looks like it's going up it's going to continue to go up so i will sell in a little bit longer um but it might go down again you, you, you don't know. And the idea behind some of these trading bots is to try and read what the market does. 
So a lot of the experiments I've been doing have been on using machine learning, artificial intelligence, to try and read the market. So no doubt you've all seen charts that people have, the candlestick charts with lines drawn all over, and they talk about things like closing wedges and breakouts and, um, you know, they're, 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 there's some stuff there. A lot of it is, in my personal opinion, a lot of people are kind of reading tea leaves a little bit. I would say there's definitely some people that know what they're doing. So in the XRP community, Geraldo XRP, for example, um, seems to have a fantastic ability to read the charts and know know what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they, they come up with a right answer, but they probably come up with nine wrong answers that you didn't see. But uh, so I tried to write some machine learning software. So, uh, you know, I tried to write something. This is nine different uh, attempts over the space of 24 hours to try and uh, predict the market using artificial intelligence. And so a red line is a short. So this is determined in most of these, almost all these trades are doing a shorts. The green ones are longs. Uh, but in this case, it's decided to do a short from there to there, which is obviously a bad move because it decided to short the market and the market went up. So it lost. Again, it did it again. It lost. Third time would have been successful. Um, a small little uh, um, a, a long, uh, which would have been successful. A small little short, which wouldn't have been Overall, it made a loss of 155, um, I think this is pounds. I can't remember what I was trading in. Um, but this is just repeated uh, several times. And here's, here's another, another attempt at it. As you can see, this algorithm was slightly more biased towards longs. Um, and actually, it learnt these trading algorithms. I, I didn't actually tell it what to do. Um, this is a particular type of machine learning called reinforcement learning in which you give it the rules and you let the software basically play it. So it... it had uh, in this case about 10 million uh, attempts at trading over a day and it would just learn and okay if I put an open here and I close here do I win no I don't okay so you know what worked and what didn't and it tries to learn what is successful and what is not sometimes it is sometimes it's not sometimes it does well sometimes it doesn't so but that's an attempt to try to use machine learning to try and trade over slightly longer periods of time so hours um, rather than sort of seconds. So there's different sort of time frames that, 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 that bots can, can, can trade over. So, yes, um, let's see here. Let's look at uh, another example. So let's see if our, our, our bot here, let's go back to Bitcoin, pound sterling. Ah! Right, so it's sold. If you remember, this is this is my bot. It was up here. So let's look at fills. So two minutes ago, it sold at four thousand nine hundred fifty nine point five seven, and the price has uh, it, it sold there. The price has jumped up. Um, it looked like it sold. Uh, yes, it sold about there. Um, and it's now looking to buy again. At the moment, it's looking to buy only seven pence cheaper than what it sold at. So it's not going to make much of a profit there. But uh, we'll see if it sells there. It might then try to. Uh, sorry, if it buys, then it might try and sell again at um, about five higher at uh, four thousand nine hundred sixty-four. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. It's it's trying to get itself there at the top. And you see, every time the price moves, it tries to get back there. Now let's look and see what's happening. I can actually show you the code. Uh, running here for this, um, or the output at least. Uh, can you see this? No, you can't see this. This has gone to the wrong screen. That's a different trading bot that's running there. Uh, one second. Can I change this? So, trader five. Let's see if I can change this here and see if I can um, get it to uh, get it to change here. What is it? Oh yeah, there we go. So we'll see if it uh, see if it does anything. I'll just uh, get some. So okay, so it's placing orders here. So it's placing a couple of buy orders here, um, and that's the price that it's buying at and the amount that it's buying at. Uh, this is kind of the raw sort of output 
but it just sort of shows you a bit of the activity that's going on. It doesn't show you the, the working behind it or the logic behind it, but just kind of shows you it sort of ticking away here, placing buy orders. And what it'll be doing is it'll be trying to, at the moment, get up here uh, at the top of this uh, order book, hoping that somebody will buy, um, uh, buy uh, sorry, will sell me some, some Bitcoin. I'm basically offering to buy some Bitcoin. So if somebody wants to sell some, and it might be that I that I buy it, so that's uh, that's that one running uh, running there. So looking at the uh, questions here, Darren Kareen, which specific algorithm have you had the most success with with trading? I've had previous experience with linear regression, naive Bayes, and logistical regression, in different projects not related to trading. So these are various different techniques for um, statistical analysis that Darren's talking about. Um, like I said, I've looked at things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, using neural networks, reinforcement learning. Um, actually, logistical regression was the better approach in the end. Uh, logistical regression is basically taking a, a bunch of prices, draw a, a sort of a trend line through, work out what the trend line is. And if it's going up, then the price is going up. If it's going down, it's going down. And that's kind of what this bot here is actually doing. It is uh, looking at the, um, uh, the the direction in which the, the price is going. And if the price is going up, it'll be trying to buy it. And if it's going down, it'll be trying to sell it. And actually that worked. The simplest thing actually worked much better than any very complicated algorithm I tried. So a simple one worked very well. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's um, that one. Um, see here uh, okay um, not the greatest of screens here of it but uh, this is the bot uh, sort of monitor of the bot that I've got running on the XRP ledger and this bot actually tries to trade in and out of euro ethereum Bitcoin Chinese one US dollars Japanese yen XLM uh, some more Chinese yen down here so it's currently holding 6080 XRP uh, 2.9 Ethereum and 1,896 Chinese won, and it will be trying to buy and sell um, all of those different currencies directly on the XRP ledger. This is the bot that I've had running for the longest time. It's been running about 18 months, and again, I might be able to kind of show you a bit of the background of this uh, running uh, here. Let me just if I can switch. Um, which screens here. There we go. And uh, so you can see it's aiming at particular positions where it thinks it's it's good. So at the moment it's aiming position one for XRP Chinese yen. So that means it's trying to buy Chinese Chinese one with XRP at the moment. Uh, it thinks that's a that's a good move. And uh, it will it will keep trying and it's it's keep adjusting its price ever so slightly on these various different things. It's, it's placing a whole bunch of orders um, in on the XRP ledger to try and get itself into the most, what it believes to be, profitable position. And uh, we might see in a bit, um, okay, checking rise there. That was a, a new bit of code I, I put in where it actually tries to identify um, a uh, Bollinger Bands and riding up the uh, riding up bulge band. So when you when you have a sudden break upwards, it tries to recognise that that's going on, and in its case, it will pull back and stop trying to trade. So the first thing that happened when I uh, ran this bot, this was about eighteen months ago, and Amex announced that they were using Ripple. There was a massive price jump. I happened to be stood at the airport about to board a flight to Paris when this happened. And my bot very helpfully went and sold all my XRP as the price was going up. So I basically lost out on the fact that the price had gone up because it sold all my XRP too cheaply right at the start. And that's when I realised that it has to have some defence in for that sort of that sort of thing. Um, it has to be aware of if there's a sudden jump up in price that it doesn't get caught out um, with that price change. So uh, Q length here, it's, it's basically, you know, it's, it's putting various various bids in and there's there's a kind of a queue to make sure it doesn't get all confused. Uh, getting fresh order books. If anybody's ever writing their own uh, trading bots, 
one of the things you have to do is locally keep a, keep state as to what's happening on the exchange. You need to know what orders are there. And most APIs for, for exchanges give you the ability to get a kind of a snapshot of the order books and then updates. And you need to keep those in sync. And, you know, I had a problem where at one point uh, my the, the connection would periodically disconnect, it would disconnect, reconnect, but in that time it missed some of the orders come through. It would get itself out of sync and then it started um, selling again. I, I lost a few hundred pounds um, in the space of a few hours whilst it was busily um, selling stuff off at the wrong price. So yes, it's very definite. There's, so the, the, there's two aspects to this if you're writing your own trading bot. One is you need it to be able to work reliably. So just you know, it has to do what you expect it to do 100% of the time, regardless of whether the network drops out, the exchange drops, the price jumps up or down, or or you run out of balance. One of the biggest issues I've got at the moment is dealing with rounding of numbers. You know, you, you divide two numbers and then go to submit a bid, and because computers will round numbers ever so slightly, it suddenly goes, no, you don't have enough money to make that bid, and you you're ever so slightly off and you need to adjust it and say okay well place a bid that is you know 99.999 percent of my balance not a hundred percent of my balance because there's going to be a little rounding error in it so so two aspects one is getting it to do what you want it to do reliably the other aspect is getting the strategy right so that it is actually profitable and again you know there's lots of different strategies um you know, and, and reading through trading papers, and some of these things are are particularly um, you know in depth, depending on how far you want to go. I mean, if you want to look at so um, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, market making, um, you know, there's 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 sort of papers on. Um, You know, doing reinforcement learning, for example, and a lot of this stuff ends up being, you know, quite heavy. Uh, oh, this one's quite an easy one, actually, quite a small one. Um, do, 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 do. Some of them can end up quite heavy on the maths. Um, you know, looking at what's 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 going on. You know, building mathematical models. Um, and this is pretty in-depth stuff. I actually signed up for a uh, Coursera course on on um, some of this algorithmic stuff with machine learning and wow it was way over my head um, I'll admit that so you know some of this stuff is 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 pretty pretty heavy um, the good news is you don't need necessarily all of this um, you know it's, it's that kind of parable of the hunters in the forest and the bear and you know two hunters are in the forest and they see a bear and one of them starts running and the other one says, what are you doing? You can't outrun the bear. And he says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. And that's, it's a bit like that with trading. You don't have to necessarily make every trade profitable. Just on average, they have to be profitable and they have to be more profitable than, you know, some somebody else. Um, you know, so as long as you're more profitable than the average, then then, then you're going to be OK. So Hasmatic asks, uh, so would you say then that if you were to invest your cryptocurrency, most of the asset management will be done by trading bots or would this tend to be done manually? If you were to invest it in a fund, then uh, I don't know about cryptocurrency ones. Most kind of large sort of stock market funds will be done algorithmically. And there are algorithms for portfolio optimization. Uh, so again, this is another thing. Um, Algorithm um, portfolio optimization or portfolio management. So this is this is looking at at um, I have a portfolio of stocks and shares. How much should I allocate to each one? And there's there's software that can kind of look at the relative performance and risks for each one and try and work out what is the what is the best way. 
this is a um, a paper these these are just example papers I'm bringing up I'm not trying to call up anyone in particular but um, bu -bu 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 -bum, again quite heavy on the maths here this is using what's called genetic algorithms in which you create one algorithm and you you try it out and you you see how well it does compared to other algorithms and you basically evolve the best algorithm so you try a whole bunch of different ones and and the idea being that you eventually evolve in the the, the ultimate um, the ultimate one um, based upon how genetics work in humans the survival of the fittest um, so here we go normally by the time you get right the way down the bottom there's there's often a conclusion that shows you how well it how well they do um, frustration control no maybe not on this one um, so anyway, uh, if you were to invest cryptocurrency in a in a portfolio, I don't I don't know if it would at the moment. I think it might be manually traded, but there could be some automated ones out there. So Henrik Thornquist says my best strategy probably one of more basic uh, Bollinger Bands, MACD, RSI settings. Um, yeah, stop limit, stop limits, TSL trailing stop limits. Um, yes. Exactly. Yeah, you, you that's the sort of thing that you can you can do. And you can test some of these as well on on sites like um TradingView. You can go in and put strategies in and there's strategies you can choose and you can tweak and uh, and tune. Um, you know, I've I've got some here that use exactly these these sort of same things that you're talking about um here. You know, I can um let's see here if I switch back again. Um <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can find one second. sure if I can see them see them here uh, I did have somewhere um, yeah some somewhere I've I've, I've um, written some that, um, that that use all of those type of uh, uh, indicators to try and to try and then uh, predict what's going on I'm just having an, an, another look here to see if I can find in in, in my code just to show you an example um, Dum dum dum. Sorry, one second here. All right. Um, I just need to get it to show up here. Here we go. So this is this is written in Python. Python's got some good uh, libraries for this. There's a library called TA Lib, and here's here's my attempts at using various ones. The, the ones in red are commented out, so they're ones I've tried, but sort of didn't work out. So I used one to do with momentum, RSI, um, uh, EMA. These, these these are all in what are called technical indicators. They're all um, basically equations based upon uh, the, the the prices. So. EMA is the exponential moving average. So this is what what is the average price over time, um, and it'll give you kind of a smooth line of the price. And if you take it over certain time periods, you can establish certain things um, on here. Um, um, MACD. Uh, so this is this is one MACD moving average convergence divergence uh, stock. That's a stochastic oscillator. Um, there's literally hundreds of these different types of. Um, uh, uh, different types of indicator. I'm basically taking them all. In this case, I think this is all running it through a a uh, neural network here. Um, so this is this is the the um, definition of a neural network here that I've got, and uh, it is basically trying to trying to to test this and work out how accurate it is. So it's saying, okay, given a bunch of historical data, can I learn how to predict some future data and try and work out how how accurate it is. So yes, um, 
I hike around. Uh, what do you see the future of bots and markets? Um, I think they're going to be used more. Um, there's going to be uh, more sort of study into them. A whole other area that I've not really talked about is what's called arbitrage. So arbitrage is uh, buying and selling on, say, different exchanges. So you could buy on one exchange and sell on another exchange. So just recently, for instance, GateHub had XRP being sold at about 20% less than everywhere else for US dollars. I was able to transfer some money to GateHub, buy XRP, send it to Bitstamp, sell it, and I made um, about 15%, 20% profit on that, which was great. And people have been writing bots to kind of do that sort of thing, to try and move around between different exchanges. Again, the, the fees are where you can get stung if an exchange has a fee to um, withdraw, for example, or, or, de or deposit cryptocurrency. That could be an issue there. Um, there are some people trying to create funds that are based upon AI. So um, what was that big, uh, was it Rialto AI? Um, Rialto AI, that was the name of it. Um, Rialto Trade, yeah. So um, this this was some people that were trying to build a uh, algorithmic trading and machine learning kind of system. So they came up with various things: so prediction trading, market making, arbitrage. So these are various things that we've you know talked about on here. And the idea being is that they're going to sort of they're going to do all the clever stuff. Uh, you're going to buy their, what is it, XRL token um, and kind of sort of buy into a share of the profit that they make. So what they're doing is they are they are basically asking people to pool all their money together that they are then investing using AI and then come out with it. Again, um, I'm not, um, you know, this is not an endorsement on any of these, these, these platforms. This is just uh, um, something that's quite sort of interesting as an approach um, that they're that they're doing. So um, yeah. So here they have a sort of screenshot here about various different algorithms they have running and how well they've been doing um, on the platform and you know asset value over time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. So yeah, and again, that's another thing is is that what sort of profit and you know, what sort of time scale? I mean, it could be that you're looking to, um, you know, make a make sort of profit in the short term. It might be that all you're trying to do is protect protect something in the long term. So again, XRP, eighteen months ago was what twenty eighteen twenty cents, got up to what's it three dollars three dollars fifty at its high, then dropped right back down again. It's now up at fifty cents. So if you could write something that could have just sold at that three dollars level and then bought back in at the twenty cents level, thirty cents level, then you know you would have made profit. So if you had something that could just buy and sell, um, you know, once or twice a year at the right times, then maybe that could be of advantage to you. So there's different time scales that people want to to, to work on, and again. Why would you want to do that? Well, once or twice a year, you could trade manually, obviously, but it might be that you want to sort of distance yourself from the emotion of it and uh, and then get something else to do the trading. So I hike around asks, uh, could bots theoretically let your funds become a micro exchange? Uh, yes, um, yeah, they could do, and and you could, you know, I mean, this is where it overlaps with things like I talked. To, Two weeks ago, about stable coins, and I talked about a stable coin called Dai, and Dai is actually an algorithm running within a smart contract on the Ethereum platform that allows you to uh, loan against assets you have. So, and and the price of that is algorithmically kind of sets to go up and down in order to try and keep Dai level at one US dollar per Dai. So that's kind of Algorithmic trading combined with almost sort of being an exchange, being a stable coin, these things are kind of interrelated. Um, so, so yeah, you you know you, your bots theoretically could let your funds become a, a micro exchange. 
Crypto Green Man says this is not good for dyslexics. No, it's I'm afraid uh, it's not there. Yeah, there can be a lot of sort of complicated bits in here. Um, I have trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm not dyslexic um, as far as I'm aware. Um, but I have trouble looking at things like which is the bid and which is the ask price. So when you look at a when you look at a um, currency here, oh, looks like we've we, we did buy again. So looking back here at the fills, oh, there's been a few while we've been on 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 the show. So uh, the first one while we were on the show was that sell there 15 minutes ago, and it sold at uh, 4,959 then bought back at 4960 so it actually bought it back more expensive than what it sold it so in theory that made a small loss but it then sold it at 4964 so that was a, a profit and a bigger profit than the loss that it just made if that makes sense and it then has bought it back again at a lower price so ideally you would always want it to sell at a price higher than what you just bought at and buy at a price lower than what you just sold at that's never going to happen continuously, but that's the kind of the thing you're trying to do uh, with something with something like this. And so this is seems to have done quite well. You know, it bought at four thousand nine hundred sixty-two, and it's now looking to sell at four thousand nine hundred sixty-four. So making an ever so slight um, uh, profit um, and loss each time. If I look and see at my at my actual wallet, what the value is, um, it's one hundred sixty-four. Uh, 0.42 pounds it was 165.9 or something earlier today so you know it's made nearly a whole one pound profit wow um, not something to be that excited about but that's with a kitty of 150 pounds so if it made a one pound profit with 150 pounds if it made a one pound profit per day with 150 pounds well if I gave it one and a half thousand pounds could it make Ten pound profit. If I gave it, um, you know, fifteen thousand uh, pounds, could it make a hundred pound profit? Uh, you know, so this is the kind of thing. Is that some of them can scale up, some of them can't. It depends upon what you're doing. In this case, it's a market maker, so it's reliant on other people buying from it. Now, I could give it millions. I don't have millions, but imagine I did. Great. Um, if I gave it millions, well, that's no no use unless people want to buy millions off of it. So there's a kind of a natural limit to what it can do um, in this particular algorithm, in this particular case of being a market maker. So let's see here. Henrik says, uh, what I did was after a buy sell was a 10 minute no trade freeze to try and avoid that. Yes. Uh, and I do the same thing on uh, one of the other one of the other bots. Um, uh, one of the other ones I run here, I'll, I'll very briefly can uh show you so if i go back uh terminal doo -doo -doo, um, bum, 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 bum. i can find which one it is again no it's not letting me see it right now it's going to switch over no it won't switch over automatically uh, terminal terminal window Okay. Ah, there we go. Right there. Crazy Ivan, right? Um, take it from if anybody's ever seen the film The Hunt for Red October, they'll know what a Crazy Ivan is. Uh, it's a maneuver in which, um, in submarines, uh, the one dead spot that a submarine can't see is directly behind it. So an enemy sub would come directly up behind another sub and it'd be completely invisible. So the sub in the front, every so often, would do a, a, the Russians had a move called a Crazy Ivan, in which a submarine would just randomly turn 360 degrees around um, to kind of spook the other sub but also to see what's going on around it and um, my bot actually does the same thing so every so often it will do this move called a crazy Ivan in which it will then back off and not bid at the best point but just wait for a certain amount of time and soon you'll probably see it, it come back and say that the crazy Ivan's over and it'll start bidding again so this is a similar kind of thing to what you just um, said there Henrik that uh, you, you sort of take a break after an order has gone through and um, this uh, um, this bot does the same thing so we'll probably see um, in a little bit it'll probably say that Crazy Ivan is complete and uh, you know the, the, it's gone back to uh, the, the, the price it, it, it thinks is, is good so 
Yeah. Um, okay, we've covered a fair amount here. Hopefully this has been useful to people. Um, if anybody has any other questions, we've been going for just over an hour now. So if anybody has any further questions, then you know, feel free to free to ask them now, or if anything you want to talk about. Otherwise, I'll start wrapping things up. Um, and as usual, if there are any questions um, that people want to ask in the comments in the YouTube video or grab me on Twitter, then please uh, please feel free to do so. Um, Yes, Henrik says, uh, because I noticed my bot often sold and bought back rather quickly again, it needed to make sure it had a cool down period. Yeah, and, and actually buying and selling can move the market. So if you suddenly buy, um, suddenly the whole market may move to fill that that that, that gap of, of where you were. So, um, so yes, uh, you know, often it's, it's, it's good to have, um, you know, some kind of cool off period to wait for the market to kind of sort of stabilize again before you before you keep keep trading but yes um, okay if there's no further questions then I'll wrap things up um, thanks everybody for uh, coming along and uh, yeah if you like this video hit like hit subscribe um, doing all the usual YouTube uh, begging that I've got to do here um, but it is it is worthwhile doing because I do set the events up as as um, as events in YouTube um, I'll try and put them on slightly more in advance of when I do now, but it's normally um, Monday um, at, at the same time, and uh, you'll get an alert um, if you if you subscribe there that a new show is is, is happening. So great, um, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, see you next week. Good night.